it's been a really fantastic evening. We had a fantastic engagement from our panel, but also the audience. Really interesting questions. And I really hope that the discussion continues. I can see myself in a lot of the comments that were reflected in that you know, breaking the barriers report. So some of it is a sort of an emotional response and some of it is a scientific, logical response, which is what do we do now? So I think it's a very well put together, as you said, report. I think it's uh, easily read. So I will be disappointed if people don't read it and find information that's pertinent to them. There are lots of barriers in the way and lots of small, in, in, each individual thing is, is incremental and, and could be sort of minuscule, but they add up and add up and add up and add up. I don't want to think that my friends or the younger students behind me are going to be disenfranchised by chemistry. I want to make sure that we open doors for them. It's a deep set problem that's existed for a number of years and you can see things shifting slowly, but really almost imperceptibly slowly. The numbers are changing over 20 year periods, 30 year periods, and it'll take a hundred years or more mm. before you get even close to any sort of equality at the top levels of chemistry. And I think it's that sense of challenge and the real urgency to accelerate that timeline that comes across from seeing what's in a report like this. So we've made a number of commitments in the report um, and we're really looking forward to getting on and implementing those recommendations. But I guess importantly it's really about working with others across the sector to make the changes that we need to see to ensure that chemistry really is a profession for everyone. It's vital that there have to be really clearly defined action points and there have to be ways to move things forward. And I guess if I picked one of them, the harassment support line, for academic staff who experience bullying and harassment in the workplace. I think that's a really powerful thing that a society can do to try and support its membership. I know young female academics, friends of mine who work in other departments at other universities who've been told when they've gone on maternity leave, please can you come back in and do all your lectures because we can't move that work on to somebody else. And two months after the birth of their child, they've been going in every Tuesday to do their lecture course. You know, and, and that's not necessarily prima facie bullying, but it's not really acceptable the way pressures are brought to bear on people in all sorts of different ways in academic life. And I think the chance for a society to capture what those experiences really are and then advocate for change with heads of department, that's, that's mm. got real potential power. And the fact that there are such clear directives of how, um, directives of how can people can get involved. That's really very powerful so that, that folks can't just read it and go, well, that's really interesting now. It's like, this is what I would like for you to do. I think that's going to go a long way to allowing different um, sets of communities to be able to action all the work that's there. But there are things that every single woman can do to make it better for the people behind them or indeed their own peers. Even if it's just you know, a, a shoulder to cry on, a shared experience, um, I think that makes an enormous difference because a lot of it is about um, giving somebody the hug when they need it to keep going. And just as there was a, a call at the end for people to take ownership and to then take actions themselves, not to wait for somebody else mm -hmm. to take the action, I think is a very important message uh, and one that I look forward to seeing what actually does come forward. Mm -hmm. We're always less automatically than, than men and I think that's really unfair because there is amazing science being done. Women are doing incredible mm. things and why are we not framing it in this way? Why are we not saying Sylvia's incredible, she's done amazing <laughs> science. Many young men are also with young families, are also committed to picking their children up from crash, also have difficulty travelling around the world to go to conferences. So we're in a position now where I think that our voices will be heard because I think the audience is more receptive to it. Men as allies are incredibly yes. important and we need them. Yeah, we do. <laughs> We'd love anyone who's interested in this area, first of all, to read our report. Um, it's got some fantastic information in there. Um, and then to get involved in the social media and continue the discussion um, either online or with us in person. <laughs>